Hello, welcome to the shed. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to edge joint a board correctly. First of all, you need to make sure that your blade is obviously square in the mouth. And I'm going to work on this rough piece of jar down here behind me. So let's jump down here and I'll show you how we initiate it and then how we actually square it off. So obviously when you're working with a rough board, you'd probably use a scrub plane on that first to actually remove this material. So let me just show you how I go about instigating it. Now, when you're doing edge jointing, I wouldn't go any shorter than a number five. This is the way I hold it. I either pinch here on the sole or actually have my fingers under here like this with my thumb on top. And that's so I can reference my fingers on the side here. When we initially instigate this, you want to start with the plane off the edge of your board like this because you want the blade to hang off and not engage. And then as you move on, you can see that you start to engage the blade. Now, another thing you've got to be careful is when you start, you don't want your plane to angle like this. You want it to sit flat. And similarly, up this end here, as you come off, you don't want it tipping like that. You want to keep it flat as it runs through, which is a little bit easier because you just put your weight down on the back of the sole. So as you punch through, you're actually keeping it flat. And when you're at this end, you just keep the weight on the front. And that's how you avoid those two problems. Now, when we first instigate this, you obviously want to run through a few times and you're actually listening to this. Now, on a dirty board like this, you can actually see where the parts get removed, but if you've already got a, a clean piece, you can't really see that. So the easiest way, and I'll demonstrate this in a minute, but you can hear the kind of jumping of the blade as it engages and disengages as you go along the edge. So let's jump down here and let's see if we can hear this. So we hear it engage there, disengage, engage, disengage, engage, disengage. Let's try that again. You'll also notice as I come through this section here where it hasn't engaged that the plane kind of slips over that because the blade is not engaging and there's no tension on the blade. So let's watch that again. See how it goes fast there and then it slows down. Again. So you can hear the blade engage here. Skip no engagement, re-engage. So there's a slight difference in the sound. So I'm just going to go a couple more just so we can get this down flat. So we now have a relatively flat edge here. Obviously the next step there is we want to make sure that it's square this way. So to do that, what do we do? Well, if you've already got a reference face or a face that's flat enough, in this case, it doesn't really matter. You can edge joint the edge and then do the face. Generally, I would do the face first, so you've already got a, a referencing face here. But let's just assume that this is already flat here. So I'm going to grab my little square and I'm going to reference like this. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to reference down the piece. So I'm looking down at like this, all the way down. Long boards, you can bump it up on your shoulders so you can get a reference. And so you can see where it's square and where it's not. Now, if you've got a busted board like this that's actually pulling apart, it's going to be a little hard to tell down this end. So I'm just going to discount this section here when I'm squaring because this is where I'm going to chop it off. And normally you'd already have your boards chopped rough to length so you've already removed the bad parts that you're not going to keep. If we look at this board here, we can see that it's not square. We're high on this side and low on this side here. So how do we go about squaring that edge up? Now, this is where there's two different ways depending on whether you use a camber or whether you don't. So let me tackle first using it without the camber and then I'll talk about how you do this with the camber. The process is fairly similar, it's just a different spot where you hold the hand plane. When we're looking at edge jointing and how to do it correctly, we first need to look at how the blade is actually sharpened because that can affect how you square up the edge of your board. Now, the most common way that seems to be out there in modern times is using a camber and since I don't use cambers, I'm going to show you the way that I do it first, which is rolling the edge of the blade. Now, have a look at the blade here on my brand new Stanley Bailey. If 
we take a close look at that, you can clearly see that these corners are actually rolled. And that's how I prefer to do it because it affects less of the blade. You don't have to do it every single time you sharpen. And that's why I do it this way. So let's get into how we actually joint it using that. Now, in actual fact, with the rolled edges or with a straight through square blade, this process is the same. You don't really need to have any camber to end joint a board correctly. You can actually do it with a straight across square blade. Now obviously it does depend how wide your board is, but as long as the blade is wider than the board, it doesn't really affect it. Before we tackle this, we need to look at see here how we have this little off step here where the blade doesn't cut on the hand plane. So we can use that to help offset the plane across to the edge that we want to cut. Essentially, holding the hand plane up the front here, we can move this back and forwards across using our fingers and we can hold this hand plane in any alignment that we want. In doing that, we can control where our blade cuts. So since we know that we've got our blade rolled or we've got a square blade right to this edge, we've got that little offset. We can actually come across to the high side, hold our plane across. So we can hold it in something about this thickness, which is 19, 20 mil, something like that. We can actually hold the plane across here about halfway which means we're going to hit this high point here. And so we engage. And if we look down here in the mouth, we're just taking this thin sliver out. So we're going to run that right through. Now, I like to do this twice. And then we can actually come back into the middle, do a full length skim pass couple of times in the middle and now we can double check this. Now you may need to repeat this process over a few times until you get it right because you've got to keep checking to ensure you've taken enough off on that high side. So then like this you're going to check again and go oh I still need to take more off or I still need to take less off and you can judge in the different spots how much you need to take off in various areas. Now for me I have to take a lot more off this top edge to about here. So in this situation, where there's more to take off, I put a little mark just so I know I need to be more aggressive through this section. But then after that point, I need to be less aggressive down this end. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle this more aggressive edge up to the point here first. Now to do this, we can engage it like we did normally. And as we approach that line, we just want to lift the plane slightly and it'll pull the cut out. And then once again, full length through there and then double check once again. Now I can see I'm getting very, very close to it. Now, So what we have to do now, now that we've got that little bit of a reveal left there, we want to keep doing that technique we've done and take that far side down a little bit further until it comes in line with the rest. So we're going to sit it across like this. And I'm going to do two full length passes now. I'm going to come in and just check so I can see that I'm still high like we showed before. So I'm going to bring it across a little bit further. And now we check again. So what we're doing is slowly moving the plane over a little bit at a time as we take those shavings and it's bringing that high point down to bring it back in square. So I'm trying to keep this roughly sort of just a little bit off the edge and then eventually we'll keep it flush with the edge here because we've got that gap that we don't cut on, we can still use that. So now it's looking fairly square to me now. I'm now going to sit the plane in, like I said, with it flush on this low side. 
and I'm going to take a couple of passes. Come in and check again. And now we can see we're getting pretty close. So now what I want to do is bring it back over the edge, back to the original hold, where we're taking our shaving in the middle of the blade, or not where it's rolled. And then we want to double check again. And now according to me, this is pretty much as square as it's going to get. I can do one more shaving. And that sounded like a pretty good full length shaving there. You heard the engagement right the way through and that's what you want to hear. There's a minuscule amount of a shaving here, like a very fraction of a millimeter slightly out here. But I believe that is because I haven't actually squared this face and we're just using this face. So you can see that this is pretty much as square as you're going to get it. For the most part, this is now square and this is the process that I use for squaring them. I'm not too worried if it's out a teeny tiny amount. I've got it most of the way there and this would be good enough to actually now edge joint it and you're not going to have a gap there, especially if you do a spring joint. So now I need to talk about canvas. Now for that, I'm going to find my scrub plane, which is just here. And this is the only plane that I have that actually has a camber, so it'll work well for this demonstration. So we can see I've got a very heavy radius on this. I think it's a one and eight radius, which is quite common. When we have a camber, which if it's on a plane that you're edge jointing more like a smoother, it's not going to be anywhere near as severe as this, but because of how severe this is, it actually works well for the demonstration. When we have a camber like this, we obviously can't hold the blade out on this far edge and expect it to joint the way we'd want because the angle is on there, so it's going to throw it out of square. So what we have to do is work with the center of this particular camber to get the action we want. So. We're now going to pretend the same hand plane that I've been using, this number 5 Stanley, has got a camber on its blade. And now I'm going to demonstrate how we'd go about doing it if we had a camber. So without the camber, we obviously pushed it right across here. Now, if you've got a camber, you're working to the center of your hand plane right here, so you've got to remember the center. So you're going to place the center of your hand plane over the top of the high point, and then you're going to push through and take a shaver. Now, because you've got a camber, it's going to take more off this central piece and leave this far side, which is going to be the low side. And it's not going to take any cut there because the radius of that blade. So because of that radius, we're taking material in the middle, but not over on this side because the blade is curved out of the way from it. And then essentially the process is identical push it over to the high point, take the cut in the center, slowly work it across until you're taking your normal shaving, which is always going to be pretty much right bang square in the middle of your blade. Now, I find that cambers like that, even very fine ones, tend to feather the two sides out and gouge it when you're edge jointing, and that's why I prefer either a blade with the corners turned out or a flat blade for at least edge jointing. And that would have been the common way that that sort of process was done back through history. In actual fact, any books that I've looked at in historical fashion, including Andre Rad Rabot's uh, book, only refers to cambering or an arch on the edge of the blade in relation to uh, rough removal tools. So I'm not so sure that cambers were used in these smoothing planes and whatnot, but I'll leave that up to you to research and you're obviously able to use whichever function that you like to actually get this edge jointing done. Both work, there's just a slight deviation in the way that you do the process, but at the end of the day, you end up with a square edge, and that's what really counts. So there you have it, folks. That's how you edge joint the side of a board, whether it's a rough board like this or a store-bought board. You're always going to want to check that the edge is square to the face before you do your joinery. Otherwise, your joinery is going to be a little bit skew if and out of square and not have the final results that you're looking for. Because ultimately, your joinery is related on to how square your board is to start with. 
So if you like this video and you'd like to continue supporting me, please consider liking and subscribing down below. And don't forget to comment. I really like to hear you guys' comments on what I've shown you here today. And if you'd like to support me a little bit further, please consider checking me out on Patreon and also on Instagram. And if you'd like to see some more videos like this, please consider checking out the video up here where I show you a couple of alternate ways to edge joint if you're going to be jointing the boards or gluing them together to make a wider board. And also the intermediate woodworking playlist that this video is going to be part of. Bye for now.